Oops, it appears I have a little clothing emergency. This fabric that apparently is drapery fabric ripped very, very easily with the pressure from my knee. So, we need to do something about that. Well, I went to the Salvation Army and bought a couple of hand towels for 50 cents a piece. And let's use one of those to do the patch. I'll be cutting a U-shaped arch on each of the pant legs to surround that fabric that ripped and both sides have to be exactly alike. That's just how I have my fetish in symmetry, symmetry in all of my work. Now we get ready to cut the towel and fold, I fold the towel in half so that uh, each cut will have the embroidered section in the right position. Remembering that they're opposite legs, the embroidered part of the towel has to be on the opposite side that corresponding to that leg for the shorts. Here we have the cut towels. Now we have to run them to the serger so that the edge will not fray. Very important. If you don't do this, the edges will fray and eventually the sewing will become undone. I learned that the hard way in previous projects. Next, I have to surge the edges of the openings I have created in each of the legs of the shorts so that they will also not fray. And by the way, the serger that you see me use is an industrial serger that I purchased at C.E. Holderby in Seattle. They're one of the largest dealers of industrial sewing machines, and I highly recommend them if you need this type of equipment. Next, I have to sew each of the towels into the hoops I made in the pant legs. To make this job easier, I start at the top center of each of the openings. That way, I can maintain symmetry where it is most seen, which is the top of the arches. If the bottoms do not end up symmetrical, I can always trim them, which I'll be showing you later. And besides, I made the towels deliberately larger than the openings. There will be some left over. And if that's uneven, it will not make any difference.
Next, I'm doing what's called a lap seam. It is very, very difficult to see this here. However, a little bit later on, I'm going to show you how I do it on a sample piece of fabric without all the fabric from the shorts getting in the way of um, your viewing of what I'm doing. Sometimes working on this kind of stuff requires a lot of digging around and patience and diligence in ensuring that no other fabric is getting under the fabric that is under the foot of the sewing machine. What you see here is a demonstration of what I am talking about when I say lap seam. Here you see two pieces of fabric that have already run through the serger. First, I put the needle of the sewing machine one half inch away from the edge of both of the fabrics. That half inch is the seam allowance that I do a simple stitch across both layers of fabric. That is the first of two stitches I do on a lap seam. Once that stitch is done, which by the way is one half inch from the edge as I'm showing you, then I open the fabric and I lay the seam to one side. I turn it over so that the seam that's laid to one side is under the fabric towards the feed dog of the machine. Therefore, the top side of the fabric, the good side of the fabric, is what is against the foot of the machine. This is the second stitch I do on my seams. Hence, this is called a lap seam. It provides far additional strength to prevent ripping or fraying of the seam. Now that the towels are, put, are sewn into the shorts, I measure them to make sure that the two legs are exactly the same and that anything that's uneven is trimmed at the bottom, maintaining the symmetry. I measure twice, measure three times, because you can only cut it once. This is an area where many regretful mistakes are made. Once the cutting is done, I need to carefully serge the bottom edge of each leg of the repaired shorts. This prevents fraying. Now, if I was lazy, I would stop right here. These shorts would be quite adequate for my bicycling and other activity. But no, I cannot do that. I need to add some colorful trimming because I am required to maintain my reputation as the one and only person who adds color to Bellingham, Washington. Let's see, they feel okay, they seem to look okay, now it's time to do the trim. Now for trimming, I did another trip to Salvation Army and bought a placemat and two towels for a total of 50 cents. This is what's going to add color to my new pair of shorts. What I first am doing is marking 
the trim, where the edges of the towel are, because I want to maintain continuity in the lines of the garments. The cutting I do, I use a rotary color, cutter, I'm sorry, rotary color, which makes a nice, even cut. Sometimes you have to repeat several times, especially with heavy-duty placemat fabrics. I cut both of the towels about half inch in so that the trimming of the towel can be eliminated. Once I cut the towels and everything needs to be surged before the three sections of the trim are sewn together. You might be interested to know that the choice of colors and patterns for the trims, that is the um, placemat and the towels, was completely random. It was just what they had at the Salvation Army that day that was only for 50 cents. Now you see me sewing the portions of the trim together. Here I have to be careful to sew precisely on the markings that I have made to match the center of the trim to the lines of the towels. Now it's hard to show it here. You, may, you will see me perform the same operation on a mock-up of a pant leg and trim to try to better illustrate what in heck I am doing. Once the sewing is complete, of course, everything has to be lap-seamed. There's a story I need to tell you. I went to Mario's, a very high-end clothing store in Seattle, because I wanted to look at some Prada clear plastic raincoats, because I'm always fascinated with clear plastic raincoats. I was very disappointed. They were $900 a piece, yet... Their seams were still a single stitch, and the seam was fraying while the raincoat was still in the rack. Because the seam was fraying, that raincoat was marked down from $900 to $600. You know, that's kind of a shame. If they had done what I do, they would have saved themselves $300. Now, we're getting to the point where I attach the trim to the pair of shorts. It is extremely difficult to show it on the shorts itself. So I'm going to demonstrate on a mock-up of a pant leg and trim so we don't have all the extra fabric of the shorts getting in the way. Here's a mock-up. There's the center of the repaired area on the pant leg. That's one side of the trim. That's the center of the trim. And that's the other side of the trim. 
you can see the markings I have made on the trim, just like I have done on the real product. So that's where I wanted to do the alignment. That's the center of the repaired area. That's the edge of the repaired area aligned with the markings I had made on the center of the trim. I'm now going to turn the pant leg inside out. Now here we are in the machine. Here's where I have to be very careful. I'm pointing to the correct side of the fabric which face together. The marking is on the outside of the fabric, the incorrect side. I place the needle of the sewing machine precisely on the marking and do a stitch allowing one half inch of seam allowance from the marking to the edge of the fabric. Now I repeat it for the other side. Again, I put the correct side, the good side together. I'm on the back side with the marking. Put the needle of the sewing machine on the marking and make a single stitch. Now my stitch lines, I'm fairly confident, are precisely the same distance apart as they are on the repaired area of the shorts themselves. Now I'm just doing the lap seams. Now it's time for assembly. That is the good side of the shorts, which is inside as the shorts are turned inside out. I will lay the trim on top of the inside of the shorts, starting with the center section, ensuring that the edges of that seam, of that section, the two seams, are precisely lined up with the edges of the seams on the shorts. Now I have to also make sure that all other fabric is out of the way before I start stitching. Again, I'm double checking everything, making sure that both sides of the center section are precisely lined up as I carefully place the work under the needle and the foot of the machine, checking it many, many times. A mistake here will be quite obvious as this is the front of the shorts and people would notice it. Again, checking it twice, checking it thrice before I start stitching because removing stitches are a real pain in the neck. Now, I have to make sure that no fabric is getting caught under the fabric I'm sewing. And I want to make sure that all the edges are properly lined up before I proceed to stitch. I'm now off the center section, off to one of the side sections of the pant leg as well as the trim. Again, Checking everything, I slowly proceed down that side until I am one inch away from the rear or the inseam seam of the shorts themselves. I am not going to stitch all the way to the inseam seam. 
itself. I'm going to stop one inch prior to that as I'm showing you right now. That is to allow me to do the final fitting of the trim to the shorts themselves. So there you go. At the end, I've locked it. That side is now done. Now we continue with the opposite side. We picked up from the center where we left off with some overlap. Checking everything that everything lined up and that no fabric is under or caught under the fabric I'm sewing. I'm going to proceed down that other side of the pant leg until I get to one inch away from the inseam seam of the pant leg. If we get closer there, I will try to show you. Right where my finger is, we're one inch away, right about there. At this point, we do a little bit, double check, check again, and we lock it. Now we're done. Now, here we are with the trim inside the pant leg. I'm going to turn it inside out, which is a bit of a struggle. Um, hopefully you can see that adequately on the camera. Now the trim is outside of the pant leg. That's important, what I'm about to show you. I'm going to just briefly show you what the two sides look like. Now here we are. Here is where the inseam seam is. You can see that the edges of the trim are still loose. They're sewn to one inch away from the inseam. So now the job is to mark the, this is a close up, to mark the trim where it meets the precise center of the inseam as I'm pointing. So I do one side, I crease it like that, and I unfold it and quickly mark it with a pen before I lose the crease. That's the marking to the center of the inseam. I repeat the same process on the other side as you see here. Now the right sides of the fabric are together. I am marking the wrong side of the fabric. Here is where it's extremely important to make sure that both of the markings are precisely together before I start stitching. In addition, make sure that all fabric, especially the fabric of the shorts themselves, are out of the way because I'm stitching only the ends of the trim together. So it's ex imperative that the shorts do not, do not get caught under the machine. And it's imperative to make sure that that seam is right at the marking. Here I've, I've already surged the seam together and now I'm going to lap, make the lap seam. I turn it inside out as you see. You can see, hopefully, that the seam for the trim meets the seam for the short, the inseam of the shorts themselves. So now it's tricky, but I need to lap stitch the seam on the trim. Here is where you got to take it real slow because the fabric for the shorts right at the inseam tends to bunch up under the fabric for the trim. You can take this real slow 
and diligently ensure that there's nothing under the needle of the machine. If necessary, you may have to forego the last few centimeters of lap seaming the trim. Now we've turned it back inside out so that the trim is outside of the pant legs, but the good sides are together. So what we're going to do now is to stitch together the missing portion between the pant leg and the trim. That's the one inch we left unsewn on both sides that is now being sewn together. I must point out, if there's any mismatch, we can do a pucker right smack at the inseam, since that's the least visible on the shorts. Now we're verifying the seams are matching. And at this point in time, we're going to do a lap seam for the seam between the pants and the trim. And here again, you have to really be diligent to make sure that no fabric gets caught under the machine. We first turn the leg inside out so we can do the lap seaming inside the roll, which means that we'll be stitching down from the good fabric to the bad fabric or the inside where the inside is against the, pl the um, feed dog of the machine. I'm just going to get started here. I'm not going to bother you to show you doing the whole inseam as it is quite tedious. Now we just finished doing the lap seam. I'm just going to now turn it inside out and show you the final results on this mock-up. The work on the shorts is precisely the same. I'm just going to skip showing it to you since you will not see anything. Now the final thing to do is to do the um, hem. I do it the lazy way. I just surge the edge and flip the hem over once. If I wanted to be elegant, I would do it twice. Um, now the shorts are ready. I'm doing a final model. Things look okay. And now I do the verification testing to make sure they're not going to break down. Do a little skip, skips and twirling around. Nothing seems to be falling apart. Nothing ripping. So I think the job is successful. So I wish you luck. I hope this is enough to get you started so you can do your own repairs. Thank you for watching.